Hello, my name is Grace and I am a Makerspace mentor in the hub at the Grace Lake Public Library. And first off, I'd like to say thank you for your participation in this program. And in this video, I am going to show you how you can design custom panels for a flameless tea light holder. So we're going to create, first we're going to create 2D designs for the panels in a program called Inkscape. Um, Inkscape is a free, open source, vector graphics software that you need to download and install on your computer. You can find the download at www.inkscape.org. Um, then we will take the 2D designs and import them into uh, Tinkercad to create the dimensional uh, panels that we will print on the 3D printer. Um, Tinkercad is a free 3D modeling software that is uh, runs on your web browser and you will need to go to tinkercad.com tinkercad uh, in order to um, sign up for an account. Now I am going to show you three different ways of how you can um, design your panel. Now the first way I'm going to show you is using some basic shapes in Inkscape um, to create this latticed uh, pattern. As you can see in this one, this is just made up of, of various sizes of uh, circles. Uh, the next way I'm going to show you how to create a pattern is from a copyright free graphic on the internet, you know, downloading a graphic from the internet. Or you can scan, um, a, 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 you know, you can uh, scan from a, a, a graphic that you already have. And lastly, I am going to show you how you can incorporate text in your design um, after you've completed uh, your graphic or I mean excuse me after you completed your um, panels you're going to send us the files and then we will 3d print all four sides as well as a lid and a base and we can also include a flameless tea light so let's get started okay first design technique um, we're using some basic shapes and in inkscape when you open up Inkscape, you're going to uh, get a brand new uh, blank screen. I'm going to go ahead and actually and save this. Um, this will save your file in a SVG format. Where's my documents? SVG means scalable vector graphics. And you're going to need that file format in order to um, uh, open up this uh, file in Tinkercad to extrude. So let's just call this. Now, first thing we're going to do is check to make sure that our measurements are in millimeters, and that is. Um, I'm going to make a square that represents the panel. So I'm going to collect the square um, tool. If I hold control, it will constrain it to a square. Go back and get my pick tool, and then I'm going to go up to the menu bar up here, which uh, tells you about what's going on in your um, file. And I'm going to actually make the size of this panel 64 by 64 millimeters. And then the color doesn't really matter um, because you're not going to ever see it. So I'm going to zoom up. You can zoom up two ways. Hold the control key down and roll your scroll your uh, mouse button um to go up and down on a pc in a macintosh and you actually you also can use um the if you tap press the mouse key it'll zoom it up and if you hold alt shift down it will zoom down that's how it works on the macintosh um instead of you know, it's option instead of alt in a macintosh um so here's my panel i'm going to um Pick a shape for my pattern, you know, this lattice pattern, and I'm just going to use a uh, circle. Click, hold control to constrain it to a circle. Um, you could do some kind of fun things with the tools by, you, you know, clicking inside of it. I don't do that. But, you know, for instance, if I go to like the star tool, 
you know, a star tool. If I use the star tool, I could, you know, change the points and, you know, pull the radius out. So that kind of, kind of play around with some of these shapes. You might get something interesting for your lattice pattern. So I'm going to delete that. All right. I'm going to change the color of this circle to something contrasting so I can see uh, where it is. Now, the square represents the panel, right? Oh, the side panel of your of your tea light. And what we're going to be making is a pattern of holes in this panel so the light can show through. So I, let's see, scroll back up. I'm going to create some, so I'm going to size up these, um, circle into the to you know smaller bigger shapes and i'm going to do uh, a quarter of this square and then i'll copy them and repeat make a repeat is basically what it is so let's see you can copy and paste control c and v control v um as one way of duplicating your uh, objects sizey thingies down here or you could also right click and get uh can do control d which is duplicate which will copy uh the shape right on top of it and then you could just pull it off so i'm just going to create a pattern of circles I hold my shift key, I could select several circles at once to duplicate. Yeah, holding my control key to constrain it to a 90 degree angle. And I think I'm going to oops, shift. Shift to multiple select. And just kind of arrange these circles around here. And as I'm making this pattern, I want to make sure I leave like connective space between the shapes because the, the pink are the, going to be the holes and then the blue is going to be the, the solid part of the panel. You can also marquee select the group of circles. Um, if I wanted to, okay, I'm just going to copy this, I think, and scroll down. Actually, I think I'm going to run this around here. Uh, flip it. Oops, I mean to do that. Can I flip it? Yes, horizontal. Yes. You know, and arrange this to what is aesthetically pleasing <laughs> to you. And try not to get your shapes too close to the edge because you need to leave a little bit of a, a rim around the edge to contain your um, panel.
when you have your pattern where you want it, it's time to turn it into holes into the background of the panel. Uh, let's see. So what you're going to do, what you're going to do is you're going to select everything uh, using your, uh, you know, clicking and drawing a marquee to select everything. And you can tell, you can see the little dotted lines around the um, circles and the dimension lines around the uh, square. Then you're going to go up to path and you see um, under path, all these different things you could do. We're going to go down to exclusion and that what that's going to do is going to exclude everything uh, above a, a particular shape so let's click exclusion and as you can see it cut holes into the back panel so if i drew another rectangle here and moved it behind go to the bottom you will see that the holes are now transparent Let's just get rid of that. All right. Then the next step, the last step, what we do. So this is this is complete. And what you, next thing you can do is just save it. You know, Control S, Command Save. Um, and this one is done. Okay. For this second design technique, I'm going to show you. Um, we're going to use a, we're gonna, you know, we're going to search the internet for a copyright free or free for personal use graphic, um, bitmap graphic that we're going to find on the internet. Um, and and bec what we're doing basically is fairly black and white because we're creating a pattern of uh, some sort of pattern that are holes into a, from a solid um, background. So what I like looking for for this type of uh, project is free simple stencils because they're generally stencils are generally already figured out for what parts are the holes and what parts are the solid and uh um and they're generally very uh clean graphics in that they're very you know they're, they're black there's a great contrast between black and white because what we're going to be using in inkscape is something called trace bitmap um and the more contrasty or more uh, apparent the difference in, in colors, the easier it will be for the program to um, distinguish uh, edges. So I let's just grab, let's grab this little uh, flourish. And it's free stencil pattern clip art, so we're good. Let's click on it, and then I'm going to right click on the graphic, and I'm going to save the image as in my um, tutorial folder as just flourish save that we are now going to go back to inkscape open up a new file then what we're going to do is go to well actually first we're going to save it always got to save first so i'm going to save this as uh, flourish And then we are going to the file for, uh, menu and you're going to go down to import. And we're going to import the Flourish uh, bitmap that we just downloaded. Um, it's going to ask you about uh, what the image import type is. And we do want to embed it in the file. Uh, and we want to maintain the dots per inch uh, that the, the resolution that the bitmap had from the file. I like to click the um, image rendering mode to be smooth to, as it says, optimize the quality, um, which will help when we bitmap trace this image. So let me explain a little bit about bitmap here. So as you can see, when you zoom up on a bitmap image, you could see the stair steps, right? Because the way bitmap image works is that it's just basically little dots on the image. And, uh, and it, at higher resolutions, uh, this is crisper. At lower resolutions, like most of the resolutions on the internet, uh, is like 72 bit. You're gonna see these little gray uh, bitmaps, and this will not print on the 3D printer. We need to convert the bitmap into a vector graphic to print on the uh, 3D printer. What a vector graphic is, 
um, is basically it's it it's a mathematical equation. It it's a language that defines all of these curves uh, and as a mathematical formula. And the advantage of uh, vector graphics is that you could take it; it's device independent. So since it's a mathematical formula, you could zoom in and you can enlarge and reduce it with no loss of quality on the edges versus a bitmap the the bigger it is the more um uh rough it is and in order for the 3d printer to be able to print something like this in you know 3d it needs to have uh the mathematic vector graphic language so what we're going to do um is convert this bitmap image into a vector graphic image and the tool is called trace bitmap so I'm going to zoom down a little bit so we can see what's going on. Stop it. I discovered this by accident. When you hold the control and the mouse button, it will really do strange things um, to the to the page. And I don't know why you would ever want to rotate the page. But anyway, uh, I'm going to I'm going to select the uh, graphic, the bitmap image, and then I'm going to go up to uh, path, I believe, and then it's called trace bitmap. Now, there are a whole bunch of controls in here that I've not really played around with all that much. And if you're really interested, I know there's a couple of tutorials online where you can figure out. Uh, and, and actually, most of the time, you know, you, you press a couple buttons, you uh, oh there's help here uh, and, and move you know like increasing the threat brightness threshold just visually look to see what it does to your um bitmap and how the tracing is going to be now if i update this it's going to show me a preview on the screen and then if i increase that or decrease the brightness it, it, most of the time i just usually leave it at the brightness threshold and that works really fine especially since i'm using these black and white stencils. This, the commands on here are, if you're getting into like bitmap tracing, like color photographs or th images that have less contrast, um, that's like another tutorial for another time, <laughs> but you can do that. So I'm, this looks good to me. So I'm going to say, okay, and close this window. Okay. And if I go back to the, uh, 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 to the bitmap again if i zoom up I, if i pull this bitmap off you can see the uh traced image underneath and actually if i zoom up here you can see the difference here's the bitmap with the stair steps right and then you can see the clean edge of the vector uh graphic um with its mathematical uh, uh defined mathematically defined uh curves so i'm gonna pull this off um now, if you needed to, you can edit this vector graphic by using this tool called the uh, uh, empty pa edit paths by nose tool. And when I click on that, you see all the little anchor points, um, like kind of like the anchor points on a graph. Oh, that's exactly what it is. Anchor points of graph that define the points that it's that the mathematical equation is drawing the curves from. So if I zoom back up, and if I wanted to say delete one of these nodes did it again delete one of the, if i click one of those nodes you can see these little handles right uh, now the, these are they call these um a b0 curves um and you can edit you know i pull these handles and and edit the curves like for instance if i wanted to make uh, this a perfect you know smoother arc i can pull this out and, and in the same sense i could get rid of some of these nodes to get rid of parts of this actually speaking of deleting parts we there is actually a part in here that we are going to need to delete so i'm going to zoom down here so you can see what i'm talking about See this little section here now the white sections because the black here is representing the holes that get cut through the panel and the white part is the is that represents the solid panel and then 
what we have in these little bits of the fleur de lis here or this little flourish here is that the solid parts all by itself and when it prints this is going to drop out so um, what we're just going to do is just get rid of it so let's zoom back up again and i think if i hold shift and hold all the points i should be able to delete this yeah there we go So now that'll be, you know, because otherwise what I would have to do is connect this little white bit to the other one, so the white bit, so it has, so it won't like drop through the hole. But you know, we're not even bother doing that right now. So let's click, select these little dots, and delete them. Oops, missed one. There we go. And get my pointer tool again. Zoom back down. And the next thing we're going to do is draw another square for the panel. Now hold my control down to constrain the square to a square. Get my pointer tool. Change the size of this to 64 millimeters. There's also a little, actually, what if I should show you this. Control Z. You can control Z me. There's in between the width and the height, there's a little lock. So if I lock that, then I could go uh, 64 milliliters and it'll do both sides. You know, it'll constrain it into the same thing. So I'm going to move this to the bottom. I'm going to grab my flourish and size it down, you know, holding my command key to constrain the. Uh, so you know sizes down evenly you know it looks good not too big now i want to center these together so i'm going to select both of these and i'm going to use the one of the align tools which is on the bottom of align and distribute and i'll bring up the palette over here so i want to align these vertically together on the vertical axis. That looks good. And I'm going to use my little arrow keys to nudge this down just a smidge visually. And then I'm going to select both of them, you know, because the little arrow keys on your keyboard can nudge them up and down or left and right. I'm going to marquee select the whole thing again and go back to path and do my little exclusion. And there's my little holes. And don't forget to save. Okay, uh, the last uh, design technique I'm going to show you is how to create a design using some type. Um, set and type uh, is, is pretty easy. You click on the text tool on the left and, and just click on the page and type your words in. Um, let's see, let's do L O V E. Um, we'll zoom up a little bit here. And if I want to change the typeface and, uh, you know, the size of it, we could do it up here. Or we can go up uh, to the uh, text menu and open up the text and font dialog box. Um, you, as I said, the little screen down here previews what the fonts look like, and then you basically hit apply. So I'm going to hit Franklin Gothic Heavy, and I'm going to change this to like maybe 36 points, and then I'm going to apply this, and then I'm going to dismiss this box. So we've got love here. Now, fonts are actually a bunch of shapes. That, uh, the letters are a bunch of shapes that have been locked into this program that allows us to type in words. So we need to revert um, the typeface or this word love back to its um, outline shapes in order for us to alter. We have to you know, get back to the outline in order to alter the O to add um, 
attach this counter to the background so we don't lose it. So the way we do this is you select the typeface, you go up to path and you're going to go to object to path. Okay. Which re releases the outlines for us to edit. Um, and then you are going to go at to object and ungroup it so we could work on each letter individually. So if I go to the, um, edit pass by node tool, you will see the individual um, nodes that create the outline uh, of the you know, the beezer curves of the of the of the letter O. So if I you know if I moved it, you can see I can adjust the outline. Let's so do that. So first thing I'm going to do is turn off the snap, and it, you know snap um, allows you to um, it's an alignment feature, and personally I find it annoying, but it's helpful when you're trying to you know, get things to line up perfectly. But for my purposes here, I'm going to turn it off. And then what I'm going to do is get my little square tool, um, my rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a skinny rectangle. Well, is that about, big is that? That is about half a millimeter, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's see if I can zoom in there i mean because because the 3d printer needs some you know the something to hang on to so maybe have a 0.75 of a millimeter okay is that centered Ooh, it's too big how about there so now i need to take this rectangle shape or actually I delete this rectangle shape out of the O. So then the O's would split into two different halves. Um, I think I'll select both. I'm gonna go up to my path and I don't think it's exclusion. It might be difference. Yeah, there you go. Um, sometimes you have, it's a trial and error to, of uh, an effect to see which one is right and it's still grouped yeah okay so now you can see that the counter is attached to the background so therefore the these will be holes but you'll still have retain the, the the center of the love so i'm gonna zoom down a little bit i have a heart graphic that i had already pre-drawn and that i'm going to bring over I think I want this. A little bit bigger. Yeah. And I want to, and if I want to align these together, you know, where it's centered, I would have to group um, all these pieces together. Because actually, if I tried to, to align them now with them ungrouped, um, here, let me show you what that does. If I aligned it by the center, they're all, you know, each separate piece will align to that center. Um, um, so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to group uh, the letters of the word love together. And then now I can select these, you know, so now there's just two things that are aligning to each other on the center. All right. And I am going to go back and get that square. Keep doing that. Get my square again. The control to constrain it. Get my pointer tool. Make sure my lock is locked. Change the width to 64. And I'm going to send this to the back. And Looks like I need to make love and the heart a little bit bigger. Okay. So I can select the background and line them together in the center. Is that, yeah, that's pretty good. Now, <clears throat> I found out that in order to use exclude, we have to ungroup this. They need to be little separate objects, otherwise it doesn't work. So I'm going to ungroup this. 
and select all the pieces and now go back to path and hit exclude and there I got my holes in my panel for love. I'm going to save this and then the next step is to take uh, one of our or to take our 2D designs and bring them into the 3D modeler program Tinkercad and make them into 3D objects that can be printed on the 3D printers at the library. Okay, we're going to go to our browser and log into Tinkercad. It's uh, going to, you know, if you saved your password, it's, it'll come up to your dashboard. And what I'm going to do is create a new design. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the silly name, because if I forget, it'll come up as a silly name. I will have no idea what the file is. OK, so we're doing I'm going to bring in the love panel. Love panel. Let's just do this number. Two. OK. Um, you're going to go over to the import button here. And you're going to import your 2D file, your SVG file. So choose file. I'm going to go with the love. Documents. And there's my love panel. Um, center it on the artboard. Th I haven't really figured the scale out. It maybe it has to oh you know it probably has to do with the whole size of the page which is eight and a half by eleven which is maybe why when it comes in at hundred percent it's too big, um so I would suggest going changing this to seventy five percent which we'll, we'll still adjust it once we get it in the uh, uh, Tinkercad workspace anyway so it doesn't matter but it just makes it a little bit more easier to move around once you get in there so then you can say import. Oh, I guess I was wrong. Makes it smaller. No, it is too. It is bigger. So, on in uh, in the interface of uh, Tinkercad, if you press the mouse button, that's the scroll. If you press the right bot right um, button on your mouse, it changes you know your perspective. So, and if you remember. These little handles adjust the size of your 3D piece. And as you see, it's like in 3D, you're seeing it, you know, as a block versus just a flat piece of artwork. But this is a little too thick, obviously. We're going to click on it and then we're going to, you can either, you know, hold shift key. I think it's hold shift key down to size it up and down evenly. Or what I prefer doing, I'll do, I'll get to close. You know, you could size it up to 64 by hold shift key and size it up to 64. Or you can also go in here and type numbers, which is what we're going to do in the height because this is too thick. So in the middle, you're going to click on this middle button and you're going to make that number to 1.5. Make it thin. So you can see now this is pretty much what your panel is. Now what we're going to do is in addition to you know just what we just did, we're gonna actually put zoom up there so you can see that. We're gonna actually put a little bit of a 45 degree bevel. So when the panels, the perpendicular particular panels meet each other, they'll have, they'll, they'll have a bevel and they'll meet and they'll um, be able to accommodate, you know, and we'll knock them off this corner so they'll be able to fit better. <clears throat> this, and since this is, um, the bevels will be on the inside, we need to turn this upside down so it's wrong reading. So I select this, you see these little arrows? Um, this is where you can rotate your panels you know where it's on on the horizontal and the vertical axis so we're going to flip this over if i click on it come on 
and drag it around. And actually, I can, I'm going to type in here negative 180. Okay, so now it is reversed, so then we can make the bevels on the inside. And order the way Tinkercad works is that you have solids and you have holes. And it's a kind of a subtractive and additive project process. Uh, with Tinkercad, you're taking things away or you're adding things away, uh, uh, adding things to, you know, or grouping things together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a box hole. Okay, toward the back here. And then I'm going to grab this corner, bring it up front so it's the same. Oh, I should have kept. I want to keep the... Um, the squareness of it shut this up is this far so make sure that it's scroll there we go scroll back with the wheel what did i just do oh okay just want to make sure that this is still square 18 by 20 actually let's make this 18 i just want to make sure it's a square because what we're going to do with this is it long enough yeah is we're going to rotate this by 45 degrees so negative 45 degrees If we zoom up to this, what we want to do, I'm going to change this grid to a smaller increment. What you want to do is take this hole to the edge. I mean, it's hard to see. And it's been sunk, and I need to move this up to. Actually, that might be easier to see because you want to bring this edge. See, you see the line right to the edge. No, it's sunk too deep. Um, <laughs> one of the things you could do, see this little little. It's the you, you could if you can see the hole is actually below the plane, and we don't want that. It accidentally got sunk. It's a good thing to know that you could do that, but. This little black triangle here will allow you to break, you know, unsync it. So I'm actually going to put this to zero. And okay, now it's in the same plane as the panel. I hope this isn't too confusing. And can you see, this is the edge of the hole. And then this is the edge of the panel and I want these to meet. I can use my, you know, I put the little increments to half a millimeter or maybe actually I'm gonna go a little smaller. And I'm going to move this over to the left until that line edges up with the uh, edge of the panel. The whole it lines up with the edge of the hole. Can you see that? Now we're going to zoom back out using your wheel, and you can see the hole and the panel. Click, scroll, zoom up. I'm going to grab that hole and just make a copy, Command C, and then I'm going to select both the hole and the panel, and I'm going to group group these two shapes. See this little group symbol or control G. And when I do that, the hole is going to carve out uh, that 45 degree angle off the edge. See? Now we're only going to do this 45 degree or the, the cutting the bevel, beveling it on two sides because the top 
and the bottom are going to be seated flush into the lid the and the uh, base. So I am going to uh, Command V, paste in that hole again, and drag it over to the other side. Zoom up a little bit to see if I could see that edge a little bit better. And using my mouse for these perspective controls and then using my arrows to do the final little nudge. <coughs> nope, need a little bit more. There we go. Scroll back out. <clears throat> Select the two of them together and group. And now we have beveled edges on both sides. Now, if you wanted to you can you can also ungroup, which will you know bring you back your hole. See, um, in case you know you need to adjust it or made a mistake or or whatever, so you can adjust it. It remembers the sequential groups that you made. So this is one group, and then when we grouped the other side, that's another group. Something to think about when you're creating uh, more complicated shapes uh, later on. So let's go group this again. And we are ready now to export this out. Um, so export. Um, export everything in the design. Or for instance, if you happen to have several objects in here, you can select the single object and just export the selected shape. You can export it for 3D print as an OBJ file or STL file. We will accept either one. And it will download it to your downloads folder. So this, I'm going to go down in my downloads folder. There's my little love panel number two. And then this, this 3D object file is what you are going to upload to the Grayzeck Library website in order to um, uh, get your uh, tea light printed. So let's actually, we'll go do that. Okay, final step, uploading your file to the uh, Grace Lake uh, Public Library website. So uh, navigate, you know, to the website, gracelake.info. Um, and then um, go to the hub and select printing resources. Scroll to the bottom and type in or click the 3D file submission. Okay, fill in your information. Okay, and then, oops, jump down. Choose my file. is in my downloads folder and it's the love panel number two and I'm gonna pick a color black uh, now you you know and we'll just put the quantity of one one tea light so oh actually I take that back we're gonna put in the quantity of four because you're printing out four of each of the panels and then um, they will um, print, uh, the mentors will also print out the lid and base for you. You can, if you want to, have different color lids and different color bases uh, from your panels. Um, it's up to you. And in the details, tell them that you are in the uh, uh, registered in the flameless T light folder program and then tell them that you want the uh, four panels in black and we can say the four panels in black and then you want the lid 
10 days in the lottery. So there's, you know, no fee. Obviously, this is part of the program. Um, and then just hit submit. And then you will get a reply email back that saying that we'll uh, get back to you. And then one of the mentors will get back to you um, and let you know when the um, prints will be uh, ready. So thank you so much for participating in this program. Now you've got, you know, maybe ideas of customizing um, tea light holders for upcoming holidays. Anyway, thank you so much um, and stay safe.